Hello, my name is Corey Kamori, and welcome to Lyric Breakdowns here on the Breakdown Channel, hosted by yours truly. In this series of videos, we will be breaking down, analyzing, and discussing the lyrical content of various songs from various genres and artists. And in this first video here, we will be discussing Coed and Cambria's Welcome Home off of their 2005 release, Good Apollo 1, I'm Burning Star 4. Coed and Cambria are one of my all-time favorite bands, so I thought that it would be fitting to kick off this video series jumping straight in with one of my favorite musical artists. Every single album they've released, minus The Color Before the Sun, I've loved front to back. Uh, that last album of theirs, there are a few songs on it that I enjoy, however, it just really wasn't my cup of tea. That being said, though, I do respect the fact that they were trying to go in a different direction. But I digress. We are not talking about that album here. We are talking about the huge smash hit song, Welcome Home, off of their third album. Now, this is easily Coheed and Cambria's most recognizable song. A lot of people compare the song to Cashmere. I can definitely hear the similarities. The main riff of the song is very Cashmere-esque. However, I feel that this song goes into different places than Cashmere does. So, while the similarities are def definitely there, it never really, for me, crosses over into the territory of plagiarism. But we're not talking about the music here. While the music is definitely important, especially when it comes to driving the force of lyrics and the way that the writer is going to compose lyrics, we are going to be focusing on the lyrics right now and what can be dissected right out the gate with this song from a lyrical standpoint is that this song is very angry. There's a lot of emotion in these lyrics. There's a lot of vitriol in these lyrics and that flies right off the page, right out the get-go with you could have been all that I wanted, but you weren't honest, now get in the ground. If that's not straight up and uh, blatantly obvious, then I don't know what is. This song is definitely about someone who's been hurt, someone who's been wronged, and wishes to enact revenge upon the person that has perpetrated that wrong. The lyrics then move on to, you choked off the source of favors, but if you really loved me, you would have endured my world. Again, kind of reinforcing what the first line says. It says, look, this person here, this person hurt me, this person did something wrong to me, and I wish that I can enact some sort of form of revenge, some form of vengeance on this person because I feel all of these emotions inside. Now, a lot of people would say, wow, this is kind of emo-y, and you know what? Uh, this song definitely has a lot of anger, it has a lot of emotion in it, but it's not the same kind of anger and emotion that you would find in a death metal track, or even a black metal track for that matter. This song definitely leans more towards the emo side of expressing uh, anger and emotion that is within the realm of anger and hatred. However, it never tr really goes into the territory of being whiny like a lot of emo songs, which is fine if people like that kind of stuff. However, I'm not personally a fan of that, and I actually think that Coheed and Cambria strikes a really good balance here. Claudio really knows how to go into the territory of being emotional, yet having a lot of really kind of hateful and painful words that he's utilizing at his disposal. The song then moves on to the words, Well, you're just as I presumed, a whore in sheep's clothing, fucking up all I do. And if it's here we stop, then never again will you see this in your life. Again, still reinforcing what we already have come to to know about this song. This song is about someone who is hurt. However, now we might see a little bit of an indication as to where this hurt is coming from, what kind of actions actually made it so that this hurt is present. The line, a whore in sheep's clothing fucking up all that I do is pretty revealing. It insinuates that perhaps the relationship this person was in with this other individual went down in a negative way due to someone's infidelity, due to some sort of form of adultery. So we're starting to see a little bit more as to what is driving the emotion and the anger in this song. And the next line in particular is where things start to get really interesting and start taking a turn. Hang on to the glory at my right hand. Here laid to rest is our love ever longed. With truth on the shores of compassion, you seem to take premise to all of these songs. Now we're starting to get into a different territory here with these lyrics. So again, at first glance, the first half of this song seems as if it's just about someone feeling a lot of pain and emotion towards another individual who has wronged them in some sort of fashion and they wish to enact revenge on this person. Yet now, you almost see an almost biblical or 
godlike presence in the song. The lines, hang on to the glory at my right hand, and you seem to take premise to all of these songs, gives us a window into the fact that it almost seems as if a godly figure is speaking throughout this song. Now this theory seems to ring true even more because in the documentary, The Fiction Sees the Real, Claudio basically explains how this album is written from the perspective of the writer who has created the world of the Amory Wars and who uses the world of the Amory Wars and its various storylines and characters as a way to cope with his day-to-day -day life. Claudio basically says that this whole story, these songs, they're a way for me to work out my emotions with myself. And in the documentary, he says that I wanted to show people that these songs, these stories came from a real place and that they were driven by my emotion and my state of being. So in just those lines, we are given a glimpse into the fact that this story now is being propelled from the perspective of the writer. We are now behind the writer and seeing what drives his will to create these songs, these stories. It's interesting because it has somewhat of a meta feel to it, and a lot of songs really don't have that. A lot of songs don't try to go into that territory of making it so that you are inside the head of the creator while they're creating. It's pretty interesting. It's really, it puts a different spin on songwriting and especially lyric writing. Moving on to the latter half of the song, we hear the lyrics, you stormed off to scar the armada as Jesus played letter, I'll drill through your hands. That lyric right there kind of makes me feel as if the songwriter was trying to express the fact that this person almost jeopardized his ability to create and lead his army. And in this case, the writer's army is his music, is the characters of this story. This individual who he's writing about who has wronged him has threatened his entire world that he's created and therefore feels he needs to off this person entirely. Now with the comic that was released simultaneously with this album, it is shown that the character of Ambelina, which is part of the Amory War story, stands as an allegory for the character that hurts the writer, that hurts the creator of this world. And she stands for this person. Ambelina is a symbol for this person and always has been. So therefore, the writer feels that he needs to kill this character off and get this character out of the story so that he can heal. So while people can listen to this song from a straightforward black and white standpoint of, oh, this song is about a guy who wants to kill somebody who did him wrong, in actuality, this song is about a writer who wants to kill off a character who reminds him of a person who did him wrong and therefore will change the entire scope and structure of the world he created because this character is pivotal to the plot and the other characters that are involved. In the album No World for Tomorrow, it's definitely expressed that because this character was killed off, the main protagonist of the story loses himself and goes on his quest to destroy the world. And as we get into the latter half of the song, we hear the lyrics, One last kiss for you, one more wish to you. Please make up your mind, girl, before I hope you die. Those lines right there showcase the fact that the writer character feels bad. He feels as if he wished that this person didn't hurt him the way that they did because he did love them, he did care about them, and now the only way he can deal with these emotions is to completely erase this person out of his life. Erase every single fragment of this person out of his life. And that goes into the character of Ambelina, the character that he based off of this person that he loved. And that, in conclusion, summarizes what I feel this song is about. Out of the Coheed and Cambria tracks, this one is definitely more straightforward than their other songs, and it's easier to follow along, especially if you read the lyrics and you follow the other songs and read the lyrics while you're listening to those songs as well. Everything in this storyline for this album ties together very nicely, very cohesively. It's pretty straightforward when you listen to it and figure out how the inner workings of the world work. But what do you guys think? Did I miss anything? Is there anything that you think I should have added to this discussion, to this analysis of this song? If so, leave a comment below, let me know. Let's have a discussion about this song. And please, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of these videos, click the subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for the support, and I hope to see you guys next time.